Hey everyone, Tim here with The Way of the Rope. And in today's video, I thought I'd share with you five things that rope flow has done for me. But I thought rather than do it on my own, I'm gonna invite my friend Jessica in to join us. There's a lot of male on this channel and it's nice to get a female sharing, hey. Hi everyone. So Jessica is, uh, specializes in nature-based training amongst many other things. I asked you yesterday to think of five things. I'm gonna grab my list here. You've got them uh, in your dome ready to go, yeah. So do you mind hitting us with your first thing that rope flow did for you? The first thing is something I said before is it gave me a brand new way to explore outdoor training. So it really gave me a, a tool that I can be on my own and I never feel alone because it just gives me an instant connection to training outside mm. even when there's nothing else to do. Cool, nice. I'm sure we'll, I'll have similar points to you, but I'll, we'll go yeah. back to back and we'll see. So for me, the first one I wrote down was that it helped me with my balance and I wrote fluid balance because it's not just like yoga standing on the spot balance. It helped me to, the weight, the ability to shift weight from one foot to the other and feel, there's a feeling when we are balanced. If we're stood on one leg and when you're there and you're not shaking and you feel balanced, there's a, there's a very, different feeling from when you're starting to fall off balance and that ability to go from leg to leg while I'm moving and experience in my body the feeling of being balanced was something I didn't comprehend of before that rope flow taught me and if we just give one move the underhand matador when you drill that enough times it you feel how the weight can shift from side to side and that that was just something I didn't I wasn't looking for but when I felt it it kind of blew my mind about rope flow Absolutely, that really touches on my point two. Go for it. Um, which was, it taught me coming from a background where sports and technique is very linear, very strict, very technique driven. Can you just smack me in the face to just to let go mm. and just to let my body feel? Mm. So it, it pulled me right out of a, a highly constructed and a highly technical linear way of training mm. to show me how my body should move naturally and really attune myself kind of from that. when you say linear like bilateral and just stiff shoulders. bilateral linear yes yeah. very technically driven for example what on an opposite side i also studied iyengar yoga which oh, okay. is trigonometry yeah. motion yeah yeah <laughs> essentially which i appreciate but yeah if you come from that background you start seeing straight lines and perfect technique everywhere. Whereas the rope really taught me that I have to let go and find a place that's, mm. that's in between. It's like the other end of the spectrum. I think there is a place for that for maximum. Yes. Yeah, there is. But, the, but I find it's more balanced because for me, it's very much physics and motion because mm. the other end of the spectrum would be free movement. So I've done both. Dancing, I've yeah. yeah, so so tree dancing, for example, yeah, yeah. would be on the other end of the spectrum yeah. and Nyanger Yoga on the other one. Yeah. Whereas I find rope flow is a very balanced way in, on that spectrum. Between those two Between ends, the two. got you, yeah. But it balances because not- Because there's structure and organization, but there's not- Exactly, but there's a boundary to it. Yeah. Uh, there's some sort of boundary, but what it, the way in which you feel it in your body is something I have never experienced quite, um, quite with any other form of technique. So yeah, really that tuning into your body and feeling that balance, definitely something that- Cool. I agree. Nice. My number two, which is again, similarly to what you just said there about physics in motion, finding this geometry in the body when we're shifting from balance to balance, even though we maybe as our current eyes, we look for linear straight lines, but there is this ability to, we are 3D body. I know you study a lot of fascia and there's this, we are 3D beings that move through 3D space. And when we do that, there's like these, I don't know how to call, I call it matrix lines of movement with a rope flow teachers. When we transition from overhand to underhand, and we maintain the flow, it forces us to f discover the, the, how the geometry of the body, how things fit together, right? How we are on the hip and the shoulders, and this whole thing works from the foot up to the shoulder. And we kind of, kind of something very hard to put into words, but yeah, it, it, it helped me understand geometry and see geometry in the body that I never saw before. Yeah. So my number three is yeah. dynamic biomechanics. Okay, so, we hadn't planned these. We but, had not planned these, no. by the way. But essentially, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's um, your body is organized in different ways and the way that you develop 
um, from when you're conceived mm. before birth and from birth onwards. And your body has these innate patterns that are natural. Mm -hmm. But then there's also these patterns that we add on based on how we live and our lifestyle. And then, and again, technique that you lay over mm. you, because you're, you're doing something specific. But actually these natural connections that happen in your body, they're really, really hard to hear. Mm. But the rope makes you listen. It's, mm. It really, it tunes out for me. It's, as soon as you tune out into, if you start thinking too much, yeah. It will smack you in the face. If you start thinking too much about your technique, you will get smacked. <laughs> but when you just surrender and let the rope guide you through these dynamics mm. in your body, that's when I feel the magic happens. And that's probably one of the most valuable things. Out of all five, this is probably the most significant one because it really taught me to quiet, to, to be still and be quiet and just let the rope show, show you and guide me it's like a magnifying glass a hundred percent and this and this dynamic biomechanic that we have in our bodies is innate and it's very very hard to tune into and mm. this is probably one of the only techniques or training approaches that i found that have shown me that. It? it's quite special isn't it yeah, yeah. cool <laughs> nice one so for me my point number four was this sort of aspect of brain training right when with a lot of physical training especially in the gym you're lifting weights there's not too much brain involved i think you should and you can strategize and stuff but with with rope flow there's a lot of problem solving with the body so it's very much like when we're trying to figure a pattern out especially something like the sneak where with you want to open the wrist up or the hand this way and actually it has to go the other way and you're like wait how can the rope go there and it not hit me here and, and it comes down to there's, there's a timing there's positioning there's all these things happen at once and because you're connected hand to hand you have to be precise the rope shows you the truth of your movement and if you're not true it's going to hit you so it's, it almost forces you and coerces you to work your brain to think about how the body moves and to think about timing and to think about both sides of the body at the same time and uh, yeah i just love the aspect of brain training with physical education because i think it's not connected enough a hundred percent i think technically if i if i'm talking purely from a physiological anatomy yeah. science aspect that's probably the most powerful argument for rope to flow. offer people from a scientific perspective yeah. yeah so from a scientific perspective um which is linked to neurodynamics mm -hmm. actually so the the mobility aspect is very much linked to fascia and very much linked to the the biomechanical what your body can do mm -hmm structurally that's one thing but the neurodynamics aspect of rope flow is the genius part of it because it activates your nervous system and your sensory capabilities and your proprioceptive capabilities again in a way that's amazing for a tool so simple so simple yeah. <laughs> so simple yeah um so for me my number four stems from that but it's specifically to my shoulders mm -hmm. so for the whole part of my life, uh, my shoulders and hand-eye coordination has probably been the weakest. Mm. And the only way in which you can improve on that is develop the proprioceptive nerves in your joints. Okay. And to do that, you have to challenge your neurodynamic system in which to hugely improve that proprioceptive feedback mm. in my body that I was lacking. And that's one of the reasons that I, I love to do it and that I love to have it in my coaching arsenal because especially especially with people who lack that coordination aspect and especially for me it's, it was in my shoulders it took me three months to learn how to drag and roll guys like wow really <laughs> not kidding i've now figured out a way to teach it to help people do it in a slightly short term but it took me three months because i was that challenged mm. but i love that challenge yeah and she's good now She'll be humble, I'm but okay. she's good now. Yeah, okay. I, I, you know, she's really good. Yeah. Um, I'm okay, but what you were saying that that the number four for me is the neurodynamics aspect mm. of it's an incredible tool to retrain your body and retrain your nervous system into your coordination and your proprioception. It's very powerful. My next one then, when I go uphill now, or I want to accelerate if I'm doing parkour and I've got to do a running jump and there's a short run up. So I've only got limited steps. I can be much more precise with them because what I talked about earlier with the 
fluid balance and shifting my weight from foot to foot. Um, I just understand that now in my body so that I can apply it to actual the field of play. So when I am running, or like I say, if I'm going uphill, even if I'm just hiking, knowing how to shift my weight and put my head over foot, head over foot, as Wex always talks about, because of what Rupler's given me, it's made me, I don't know if you call it better stamina, or I'm just more efficient with the energy that I've got. So when I'm hiking, and I just like that when we do a practice like rope slow, when you can actually experience it in your day-to-day -day life, that is when I experience it the most, is when I'm hiking or accelerating. Um, so your final one. My final one is probably the accessibility. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. So on a personal level, it just means that exercise and movement is more accessible to me anywhere I go. So you just have it. Throw the rope in your bag. bag. Yeah. yeah, fit in a pocket. Uh, in a pocket. At the office, we have a number of ropes at the office at our training center. Mm. Um, and it's a fidget, right? So it's not just a training mm. tool. It's just I've never heard it quite. Yeah, it's like a fidget yes, tool, yeah. yeah. I love it. It's like, it's uh, for me, I, I call it my fidget tool. So yeah. in between meetings or even if it's not, even if it's raining outside, I have one downstairs and I can just, you know, spin the rope for like five, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I need to think on something. I need to think of a problem instead of sitting at my desk. Yeah, spin while it. the brain's doing <laughs> it. <Yeah. laughs> exactly, so, yeah. so I, I love that it's made a little bit more movement, a little bit accessible and maybe acceptable as well yeah. to, to have around the office. Uh, um, I think personally made it movement more accessible to me during the day. Yes. That's something. But for everyone else, I find, I, I can't think of many types of activities that is so accessible to such a wide range of people. Yeah, absolutely agree. Low tech tool for a high tech body, as you say. It's, uh, yeah. whoever invented it, um, I think it's got quite a head on him. <laughs> <laughs> this tells me where everything is in space and there's a connection that is true or not. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Dave. Thank you, Uncle Wet, yeah. <laughs> Cool, number five then for me, um, I wrote mindful practice, but really the main point, because that is a part of it, but it's a point that I've, I've said quite a few times before in videos, but that it, it gave me something to do when I was too injured to do most things. So I had a really bad ankle injury for like five years, just chronic, couldn't do anything with it, but I could rope flow. It's so low impact yeah. and gentle. The barrier to entry is so easy. I've taught a 91 year old, shout out JJ, who still does it every day. He only does overhand, but he still loves it. You know, it's just the accessibility and yeah, how gentle it is. Even though I was injured, I could still train my body. I could move my body every day. I had something to focus on. I could work my brain. I could try and figure things out. But for me and for many of the people that have talked to me about rope flow, that's a huge aspect for them. It's like, even when they're injured or they're on a recovery day, they're, they're resting, they didn't want to do anything intense, but they could still get out and swing a rope. And then you can, like we talked, like you said before, you can ramp it up to high level athletic endeavor, or you can just keep it down as a fidget tool and just swing a bit of rope. So yeah, for me, it is that aspect of, even when I was struggling with other things, I could still do rope flow and it was a joy to me. I'm glad we had five each. Yeah. Because if we only had five in total, we would have barely scratched the surface. Yeah, I still feel like we have barely scratched <laughs> the surface, right? We could have gone 10 each and just we could have gone got started, each. yeah. But we'll leave it there for you guys on YouTube. We don't want to make the video too long, you know, how it works. But yeah, thank you so much, Jessica, for joining me and for sharing with the people. If people want to learn more about what you have to share, where will they find you? You can find us on the Mavericks Way on Instagram or Google or on YouTube. Really good head in this space. Genuinely seems to love it as well and passionate. So yeah, it's great to, to share you with the, with the audience here. And uh, thanks you for watching. And thanks, Tim, for inviting me. Yeah, you're very welcome. We're <laughs> going to do some rope flow now and hope to get some cool B-roll that you've seen over the video already. So yeah. Bye. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.